Hello everyone and welcome to a new format. It is a new time, a new age. We are trying something different here on my channel. I mean, we're trying something new. We're trying something old. Do we want explanations? Yes, we're trying something old in that it is a foundation review, but it is an actual review. I am going to not just give you guys the first impression. I mean, I am going to go through the first impression with you guys, but I am going to show you multiple different ways that I'm going to try out this foundation, give you a few different days at least of wear so you can see how it does with different primers, different not primers, different settings, different everything. We can see really how this foundation does and you can can actually get some worthwhile information out of this review outside of just a first impression. So I have got, I think this technically is the newest foundation from Tarte. You know, they did also just do the Shape Tape foundation, which I know a lot of you guys want a review on as well, so that will be coming to you. But this one got to me first. Yay, Sephora, and not really two-day shipping. I think this got to me in seven days. But it got here before my Ulta order of the Shape Tape. In any case, this is the Found Sealer, otherwise known as the Babasu? Babas? Babasu? Found Sealer? In any case, this is supposed to be a foundation that also incorporates skincare. It's got an SPF of 20 to it, and it is $39 for one fluid ounce of product. It looks like there are 30 different shades available, and it looks like they did a pretty good job, you know, with each category. They did six different shades in like a fair, a light, a medium, a tan, and a deep, I believe is how they kind of did it. And based on the models anyways, it looks like they did a really good job with the colors that they came out with in this foundation. But yeah, they say that this is a vegan skincare foundation solution aka everything we've ever dreamt of kind of a thing. It is going to be ultra comfortable, gonna give a natural radiant finish and also provides medium buildable type of coverage. The nourishing super balm Babasu is supposed to hydrate our skin. It's gonna make it look plump and healthy and radiant while also minimizing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. And then to use it they say you can do it however you want depending on the kind of coverage you want. You can use it fingers, if you want a light coverage, you can use a sponge if you want medium. And then also, they've got a brush that they say is just going to be perfect. That brush has such good reviews, so I just figured I should probably give it a try with this. The shade 16N, which is Fair Light Neutral, which is typically the shade that I wear in Tarte Foundation. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so it's a twist top. Oh, that's nice. So if you travel, you don't have to worry about the pump getting all messy. I really like that. So it is a pump. It's just a clear plastic. It honestly feels kind of cheap if I'm being completely honest, but overall, I like the look of it. And then this brush sold separately, of course, is $28. But I feel like any Tarte brush that I've ever used, I have enjoyed. I haven't tried a ton of them, but the, like I said, the ones that I have tried, I have quite liked. So the handle does match the cap on the foundation. I really like it. It's kind of a tropical type of a print, yeah. I mean, I guess it's not like matchy matchy with it, but you get you, it, it goes. And the actual brush, oh, that's, yeah, that's a good foundation brush. It is really, really soft. It is ultra super dense. Not sure if you can tell by that, but I feel like you can tell just by my finger going across it how freaking dense and packed that is. Like it does not really smoosh down. And Tarte brushes are vegan as well. So these are synthetic bristles, which I appreciate. So to begin, we are going in bare, you guys. We are gonna try this foundation without any primer. We're just gonna see how it does on its own. I do have very oily skin. I've got some problems going on. I'm doing a skincare test type of a thing and uh, I'm not sure that it's going too well. <sighs> But hey, for science, for YouTube. Anyways, okay, so the pump, let's see how it does. Nice, it it, it works. <laughs> I don't have too high of standards for my pumps. You can also see it is a bit thicker. And by a bit, I mean it is quite thick. It is not dripping down my finger at all. And honestly, I don't think it really smells like anything. So also, as always, I am gonna be testing this out, not only with the brush that I bought to go with this, but also with a sponge. So let's see how this does. Um, upon first dab, it looks gorgeous, honestly. Looks very natural. And it's like it is blending out very, very nice and easy. 
like it has been a while I feel like since the foundation has blended that seamlessly into my skin and not only does that speak to the color match being pretty good but also just foundation in general doing a good job <laughs> Yeah, we see the difference. I mean, it certainly is a lighter coverage with the sponge, like they said it would be and how foundations typically are, but I really like the look of that. Let's see how the coverage is with the brush. Okay. Yes, they are certainly giving much, much more coverage to my skin with this brush to be expected. And it does, it just feels like a nice, soft, dense brush. It's really easy to push the foundation into the pores and all that. Although I'm wondering, I might have used a little too much. Just in terms of it's looking a little bit streaky, it's not quite as effortless to blend out as the sponge was, but I don't know. I think the finish looks a little bit more um, airbrushed with the brush side, that might just be because it did give fuller coverage. Either way, there you go. I'm gonna try and build it up a little bit just on problem areas and also on the sponge side so it's a little bit more even from side to side. There you go. I think it looks really, really good, you guys. I mean, considering some of these blemishes that I did have, it covered pretty dang well. And as of right now, it does feel like I'm wearing foundation, but it does feel like a lighter weight foundation. It does kind of feel like the kind of foundation that once my oils come through, it might start feeling a little heavy, which has got me a little nervous, especially without primer on here. But overall, here you go. For the most part, things look really nice. And here we go with the rest of my makeup on. So I did go ahead and powder my face and use setting spray. And I do think that the powder helped to mattify this quite a bit. It does seem to already be separating a little bit on top of my nose, which is one of my more oiliest spots. But overall, I don't think it looks too, too bad without primer here. I just think as the day goes on, it's certainly not gonna get any better looking. That's just my prediction, but we shall see. So yes. That is all for now. I'm gonna get going. I'll check in with you guys so that we can see how this is doing throughout the day, and then I will see you all. I mean, at my next check in. I'll see you in just a second here. Alright, hello everyone. I just got done running a bunch of errands. I got my car washed, I got a prescription picked up, went to the grocery store, went and got pet food, cat food, and um, I'm ready to eat some dinner. I just got to my friend's place. We're gonna watch uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, which we do every week together, and yeah, it should be a good time, but I figured I should show you the foundation. I was sweating up a storm. I tried very daintily to uh, pat at my face to dab up the sweat, but I was noticing a little bit earlier that it is rubbing off a bit. Yeah, overall, it's not looking awful. I think it's looking a little bit cakey on my cheeks and around my nose where it's kind of separating from my oils and whatnot, but I don't think it looks horrible. But let's see if I'm uh, singing the same tune after I blot. Surprisingly enough, I don't see anything on my blotting sheet, so that's good. It's certainly gathering on the inside of my nose, and can we see when I touch it, it just kinda comes right off. Whoopsie daisy. Well, try and pat that back in. But yeah, there's the, there's, there it is. I think it's, it's doing okay. And we shall see how it continues to wear throughout the rest of today, and for another couple days. I'll see you guys in a second here. All right, end of the night. Look at me. <laughs> Just got done with a bunch of stuff, bunch of organizing and opening packages. I'm so excited. I just got the Game of Thrones collection from Urban Decay in the mail today. If you don't follow me on Instagram stories, it's there. I mean, obviously it's not there by the time you're watching this, but I saved it in my not cat related stories, highlights, whatever you want to call it. If you want to listen to me squeal like an absolute little piggy. So excited. And uh, foundation, I haven't looked at it since I got home here. Lugging a big old 40 pound bag of cat litter up to my apartment. My God, sometimes I forget 
that I'm a tough cookie. And then I do something like that and I'm like, meh, am I a tough cookie? I don't know. But I sure as heck waitressed and catered for a lot of years and carried a lot of heavy trays. Anywho, okay, we got some things here, you guys. Hopefully, as you can see, my pores on my nose look atrocious. The foundation has absolutely rubbed off around my nose. Just overall, it's looking a little greasy and faded and that sort of a thing. It has been on for about 10-ish hours here, going on, I suppose, going on 11 hours. So yeah, that is that for now. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off. I am excited, though, to keep on testing out this foundation. Like, it doesn't seem like a complete failure so far. Certainly, I think it's gonna do a lot better with a primer. Any foundation really does on my skin anyways, so I'm excited to start testing it out with primers and show you guys how that all does. I'll see you all, I mean, I'll see you all in a second here. I'm still, I'm gonna be working on the formatting of this. I think I've got a general idea of how this video is gonna get formatted, but in any case, I'll see you for the final wrap up where we will talk about how I used this foundation with the primers and how it turned out with the primers. And we'll do that together in just a second here. All right, hello everybody. Welcome here to this final little check-in slash talk about slash let's make it a review, yeah? Also, is this still too busy? I'll work on it, you guys. I'll work on it. I don't know. I feel like it looks so sterile, the background like this. <laughs> but hey, if it helps you to enjoy my videos more, that's, you know what? I will figure it out. If it kills me, darn it. What didn't kill me? is this foundation. Is it perfect? No, very far from, especially if you have oily skin like myself. So I've been testing this out the past few days here. On day one, as you saw, I tried it with no primer. Not the best results. Day two, I went ahead and used my Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. So it's just a really nice, hydrating, lovely primer. It's one of my favorites for sure. And I did go ahead and use the foundation. I used it on top of concealer because I was filming another video that day that needed concealer to be shown on camera as well. So hopefully that doesn't retract from this review too much, but you can still see, got a lovely dewy finish with it. I went ahead and powdered and used setting spray, all that good stuff like normal. However, as I think you can see here, or I'm hoping you can see here, I went ahead and I did film how the foundation looked in the ring light right after applying so that you could then compare it to how it looks with the ring light on at the end when I'm filming and showing you how it lasted on me. As you can see, it got super oily just like it did before and it also comes off really, really badly on blotting papers. If you do have oily skin, this foundation does tend to feel a bit heavier once your oils come through. It's a lot more noticeable that you have foundation on and it's the kind of weight where you're like, I should not touch my face even if it itches or if I accidentally graze it or hug somebody. I just shouldn't do that. Like, keep the affections to myself today and by that I mean just don't move because if you do, Let's say goodbye to the foundation, yeah? Now today, my third day of testing it out, I went ahead and used my favoriteest favorite primer of all time, the Guerlain primer. Oh, it is lovely. Oh, it is delightful. If I'm gonna make any foundation work on my skin, this is the primer I use to do so. And I went ahead and I used the brush for my full face this time and I guess now that I like used the brush for my full face and all of that, I can say it's an okay foundation brush. It actually might be really good. I just am finding that I'm not a foundation brush person, which is so weird because I used to be, but I just felt like foundation really, it didn't like clog up the brush, but I felt like it was really hard to make it not look streaky. And really the best way to use this was to dab it into my skin rather than rub it in circles and whatnot, like I usually would with a foundation brush or like you should with this kind of a foundation brush or how they kind of tell you to with this kind of a foundation brush. Either way, I was able to get it to work, but I did go ahead and build up the foundation with a sponge just to get everything all nice and blended out and build up the coverage. And as you can see, it was able to cover up blemishes quite well when layered on top of itself. So that was great to see. However, once again, this did get quite oily on me. I was out and about and erranding and that sort of a thing today. And I was quite oily about for, yeah, it was about four hours after I had applied, maybe four and a half. And again, it came off 
terribly on the blotting sheets, just not good, not good at all. However, with this primer, I did see, or I can see, that I think anyways, that it faded a lot more gracefully on me today. I am now tonight starting to feel quite oily again, and I've just been hanging out here doing some work and whatnot, so nothing strenuous. And I'm already oily. I can't even imagine what this foundation would be like in the heat with a bunch of sweat and stuff. I don't think it would fare very well on oily skin through that, but overall, this found sealer. What do we got for some pros? I think for me the biggest pros of this Tarte found sealer are the finish of it initially. I think it looks beautiful on the skin. It is very skin-like and natural and radiant looking, very glowy. I think initially it feels really good, nice and lightweight. I love that there's SPF in it and I would assume that it's going to continue feeling lightweight if you do not have oily skin. And another plus I would definitely say is the shade range at least based on the pictures online and the models and everything, I think the shade range looks great. Unfortunately, that's pretty much where the cons start to kick in with oily skin here. If you do have oily skin, this starts to feel very heavy on the face. It does get quite oily and greasy looking throughout the day pretty quickly and multiple times a day. It transfers really poorly with oils. Now granted, you can make that better or worse depending on primer if you do use it in what kind underneath it. But that being said, transfer is gonna happen. I find that it gathers a way a lot more than normal in my nose creases. So I don't know if it's just like the oils are making it migrate into the creases of my face or something, but I did notice also at one point today that it had settled into one of my, it's like a combination of a forehead wrinkle and a scar that I have. The found sealer definitely gathered in that. I mean, I just kind of blended it out and no biggie, but that was something to note. Maybe if you have some wrinkles or aging skin, whatever it is. So overall, would I recommend these products? Eh, I mean, eh. <laughs> you have oily skin? No, I would not recommend this foundation to you. I don't think it's going to be the worst foundation you ever try. However, I do think there are plenty of better foundations that you could use out there. I would say this is probably gonna work best on dry and normal skin. Combo skin, again, I would be wary just because that means you do have some oil to your skin, at least in certain places of your face. So yeah, I would say dry skin and normal skin. You might wanna give this a try. I'm certainly gonna pass it on to my mom and see if she likes it because she has drier skin, but overall, this is, it's done for me. We are donezies. And the foundation brush, I I mean, hey, good to have, but I can't say like, I could never live without this, but that's also coming from someone who has come to really, really love blending sponges more than anything. So yeah, there you go, you guys. There is my first weekly wear test here for you on a foundation. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the layout and everything of this video. I think there are things that I'm gonna need to tweak along the way, but I think it's gonna be like a trial and error kind of a thing. Like I'll get the feel of it as we go. Let me know your feedback down below Hello. Have you tried out this foundation? What kind of skin do you have and all of that? It's always good to hear from you and get a casserole of collective comments cooking down there so that other people can bounce off of each other and you guys can figure out if this foundation is something that you are going to want to try or not try. You can also let me know if you enjoyed the video by giving me a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you are new here, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe. You can tippity tap that notification bell down below. Become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. And until next time, just stay well until then. Bye.